Chapter 11 of the Story of Geronimo. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Reading done by Jules Harlock. The Story of Geronimo by Jim Kajilgard. Chapter 11 geronimo in chains in the apache camp at warm springs new mexico victorio and geronimo braced themselves against the side of a big wooden building which had once been the barracks for white soldiers all about them wiki up sprouted like misshapen plants a large herd of horses grazed nearby women and older children ground corn in their stone grinding bowls others prepared freshly killed meat but they were not working over the carcasses of elk deer and antelope these were stolen range cattle that the women made ready for cooking pots but they were as tasty as any wild game and they also furnished a great deal more meat for every shot expended the warm sun had made geronimo and victorio sleepy so that neither warrior felt like moving unnecessarily but their conversation was lively enough the days of our father are truly gone and i do not believe they will ever be again said geronimo even war as we once knew it is no more there was a time when apaches fought more for the adventure and plunder than anything else but now since the white men have become our enemies both sides fight only to kill that is how cochise fought the white men for ten long years victorio remarked geronimo said bitterly but finally even he made terms he promised to fight no more if his chiricahuas were permitted to stay in their homeland the chiricahua mountains General Howard, with whom Cochise treated, pledged his word that they might. Yet, less than eighteen months after Cochise has gone to join his ancestors, all his people have been rounded up by troops and shipped to a new reservation. It is somewhere here in New Mexico, and the Chiricahuas do not like it. Many have already deserted to go back on the warpath. Many more will desert there will be much trouble victorio said bitterly the white soldiers are great fools if they had left the chiricahuas alone there would have been no trouble but has there ever been a time when white soldiers did not promise us one thing and give us another why do you think i follow you to this place where you and your people have fled geronimo queried i will not live with the other apaches in that stinking country called the san carlos reservation which the white man saw fit to give them and there are too many soldiers being stationed in arizona i knew that i and those few who came with me could not hope to fight them it is good here it is good here victorio agreed but only because the white soldiers are so stupid in arizona every group of soldiers starting on an apache trail had many mules to carry provisions thus they were able to stay on the trail for many days or even weeks here in new mexico each soldier has only his own horse when they set out to pursue us they may continue only until their horses are too weary to go on then the soldiers must turn back there is small need to fret about them geronimo said confidently for many years we have run away from all the soldiers in arizona and new mexico too they will not catch us now victorio said it is not the soldiers who worry me but a white man who is now in charge of the san carlos reservation his name is john clum and he is no more like an ordinary white man who comes to oversee indians than a jack-rabbit is like an elk he has treated the apaches fairly 
and as a result they have grown to respect him some of the bravest and best apache warriors have joined his indian police force and he has vowed to put you and me whom he calls renegades on the reservation too let him talk muttered geronimo one cannot catch us with words he did not know that even as he spoke john clum and a number of his most fearless and sharpest shooting indian police were on their way to the camp they had left san carlos a week earlier for the sole purpose of capturing these two men and their followers for more than a year the apaches had remained unmolested in this isolated camp in new mexico when they went to bed that night they scarcely bothered to post a sentry in the first light of early morning john clum and his indian police closed in taken wholly by surprise the apaches could do nothing but surrender geronimo felt the cold of iron manacles as they were clamped over his wrists he and seven other troublemakers were chained together john clum directed a company of his police to take victorio and his band to the ojo caliente reservation in texas all the rest were returned to san carlos in arizona geronimo knew perfectly well that this reservation along the banks of the gila river had been given to the apaches only because no white man thought he would ever want the land the reservation was blistering hot in summer and wind blasted in winter there was so little year-round rainfall that nothing would grow well except cactus palo verde trees greasewood mesquite and other desert vegetation even as he arrived on the reservation geronimo knew that he would never stay but all his ammunition and his rifles had been taken away his knife was gone too since no warrior could travel far without weapons geronimo could do nothing for a while except bide his time and draw his rations of worm-ridden flour and tough stringy beef but he was not idle as he waited for a chance to escape searching daily he found a bullet here another there and finally stole a rifle and hid it out on the desert the agent who replaced john clum was not interested in watching him closely so geronimo was able also to rebuild his horse herds through the night raids on the papagos other discontented apaches were doing likewise one dark night little more than a year after geronimo had been brought to san carlos in chains a visitor came to his wickiup he was carlos anea who had been one of victorio's warriors i come from the warpath carlos said softly to geronimo victoria broke out geronimo asked ay carlos said he left ojo caliente and fled south to join caballero chief of the mescalero apaches their combined forces made war throughout texas new mexico arizona and old mexico they killed more than a thousand people they forced many soldiers and many men called the texas rangers and a vast number of the rurales into the field against them but finally most of them were killed only a few of us escaped still a warrior's death is better than a reservation life far better said geronimo i and those who follow me are almost ready to make a break for freedom too End of chapter 11